Hello everyone and welcome back to my little English page. Today is day two of my little marathon. How is everyone? Let me see. I'm using a new um, system now so I can't see. Yes, okay, so I see the comments on this side. Hello, Koke, how are you? Nice to see you, Koke. So today is going to be an exciting lesson. I think the software is finally working. Hi, Sergi. Hi, guys. Yes, so today I'm finally using the software. This should be quite cool. So you're going to see words appear on the screen, hopefully. I just wanted to thank Halima from Blackboard English. She's the one who told me about this software. So please make sure, guys, that you check her channel. Blackboard English. She has a lot of really cool lessons as well. So make sure you have a look. Thank you, Sergi. I'm really happy to be here as well. Uh, before we start, I also want to remind you guys that you can book group speaking classes with me at Say Oh Yes. Just check www.sayoyes.com. Um, those classes are recorded, which means you get the recording afterwards. And this is a really, really good tool for you to hear your own mistakes again, hear the, the teacher's corrections, but also hear pronunciation. And it, it's also a great way to work on your listening. Now, if you do want just private classes, you can contact me directly at uh, my email, which is mylittleenglishpage at gmail.com. All right, guys, so let's get started. We have different categories for today, and the first one is pronunciation. The word appeared. This is wonderful. Look at how cool it is. Oh, I'm pointing here, but for you it shows there, doesn't it? All right, so we're going to have a look at some pronunciation, uh, some words that are very commonly mispronounced. Hello, Yasara. Nice to see you here. Okay, so let's get started straight away. You'll see the word written in... Um, in English and the transcription on the side, which is basically the phonetic way of saying it. Awesome. So I think, guys, that the, um, the comments are a little bit delayed. So um, hopefully this isn't a problem for the rest of the lesson. So the first word is a word that I have already covered before, but it's quite an inter interesting one, I think. The first one is this word. So most people pronounce it or want to pronounce it cocoa. That's not how it's pronounced. That last A, we don't say it. Coco. Coco. Okay? Not cocoa. Coco. Coco. Good. And that does refer to a hot chocolate. Okay? Now, let's move on to the next one. Ha ha! This is a French word. I have also covered this one, but it is so often mispronounced. Um, I think I wrote the British pronunciation, uh, but I tend to pronounce it more in an American way, which is entrepreneur. Uh, but British people w would say entrepreneur, entrepreneur, and Americans, entrepreneur. Okay? Uh, do you guys know what an, an entrepreneur is? No, it's not Coca-Cola. That is different. It refers to chocolate. You know, the powder or the hot chocolate? That is what cocoa is. I know, it's a very confusing one. It is. It really is. <laughs> okay, so what about entrepreneur, guys? What is an entrepreneur? What is it? Do you know? Can you comment that down below? Oh, guys, I'm back on coffee, by the way. It's been a very long time since I've had coffee, but I'm back on it now. Okay, a person who owns a company. That works, yes, sir. Yeah, good. Okay, let's go with that. Perfect. Next word. Ha ha. Hey, Khalid. Nice to see you. How are you? Okay. The next word, guys, has a silent letter. The S is not pronounced. We say island, island, and not Iceland, okay? Island, island, very good. Uh, 
uh, entrepreneur, you're saying advice, trainer. Oh, you mean those are words that are commonly mispronounced? Because that could be, yeah? Oh, okay, an entrepreneur, somebody who gives advice to people. I guess they can on the kind of business world. Yeah, true. Okay, Island, do you know other words that have silent letters? We have seen some before in another live about, um, I think it was a hundred words that you mispronounce. And I had a whole category on silent letters. Do you remember some of the words that would go in that category? So, a very common one is, for example, salmon. Salmon. The L is silent. Okay, just like in island, we don't pronounce the S. So, if you guys know more words that have silent letters, don't hesitate to write them in the comment section down below. Okay? Good. Let's move on to the next one. This one, ha ha. Look at how cool it is. The words appear magically on the board. That's fantastic. <laughs> what do you think, guys? It looks cool, right? I think that's pretty cool. I'm really excited about it. I do need to be careful with which way I move. <laughs> okay, so this one, guys, is not lauch, loch, loch, no. Laugh, laugh. This is more American, laugh, laugh. British would be laugh, laugh, okay? Laugh, laugh. All right, so I'm finally getting your messages, guys, about the silent letter. Should, definitely, it has a silent letter, absolutely. The L is not pronounced. Now, Khalid, for empty, you actually say all the letters. You do. Chocolate, Oh, I guess, yeah, we don't really say the A in chocolate. Yes, chocolate. This is the test. What do you mean, Khalid? This is the test. Oh, no, this is not the test. This is, well, I guess it is the test. We're testing the software. Yes, <laughs> you're right, Khalid. Exactly. And yes, Koke, would is also a word with a silent letter. Would, should, could. We don't pronounce that L, okay? Uh, you also have words like knowledge, knowledge. The K at the beginning is silent. We don't pronounce it, okay? Good. All right, so let's move on to our next word. We have two more, two more words. This one. So it's not sore, it's sour. 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 It's one of the tastes. Okay, so something can be very salty, could be sour as well. For example, lemons. Oh, they're very sour. Sour, okay? Yeah, Khalid, you do say the P. It's not strong, but you say it. You don't say em empty. You say empty. Pt, 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 pt. Empty. <laughs> I'm exaggerating the P here, but you do have to say it. Otherwise, it's empty, empty, and it's not the word. It's empty, empty. Okay, it's because the kind of I see what you mean. The M kind of turns into the T, but you kind you, you do say the P a little bit. Comfortable, yes, that's a good one. Comfortable. We don't say in the table at the end of every word like that. Comfortable, enjoyable. Um, we don't really say the A but we say uh, so it's not fully true, but yes, okay. Okay, uh, so sour is a taste. Do you know other tastes? So I mentioned salty, what else would there be? Yeah, the, the delayed comments, <laughs> I have to wait a little bit. I need a, a little elevator music do, 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 to wait for your comments, guys. <laughs> okay, Koki, yeah, walk also has a silent letter. Good. That works. Absolutely. What about tastes, guys, and flavors? What else is there? We've seen salty, sour. What about candy? How would you describe candy? That's a, f a common one. We know that one. No? 
Oh, savory. That's a really good one. So do you guys actually know the difference between savory and salty? Salty usually means there's too much salt. It really refers to the fact that it has salt in it. Now, savory is usually um, used to make the distinction between something that has sugar and something that has salt in it. So you have sweet food and savory food. Savory food is going to be all of the main dishes, the starters, cheese, all of that is savory food. And dessert is usually sweet food. Okay, bitter, that's another great one. Like coffee is usually oh, a bit bitter, good. Very good, okay, perfect guys. So let's have a look at our last word which also has a silent letter. This word, so it's not yolk, yolk, no, yolk, yolk, yolk. <laughs> it's a funny word, isn't it, yolk, the egg yolk. All right, good. Um, sugary, you could use sugary as well, Sergi. Um, sugary drinks, yeah, they're sweet drinks, that works, absolutely. Hello, Wilson Alonso, how are you? <laughs> I always call you Win Wilson, but yeah, I guess I should say Alonso. How are you, Alonso? Nice to see you. As you can see, we're using a wonderful new software. Ha ha ha, there's words on the screen. I don't know if you guys are as excited as I am, but I love this. I think this is really cool. <laughs> Okay, so yes, our last word, guys, one more time, yolk, yolk, the egg yolk, okay? Very good, so we're now done with the pronunciation category. We're going to move on to the next one. I guess I am an entrepreneur. Yes, yes, Alonso, I'll accept that, absolutely. <laughs> okay, so, hi, guys, yay, more people, how are you all, guys? So we're just about to move on from the, the pronunciation category to the preposition category. Okay, so let's move on. Uh, how did I do that? So, ah, yes. So this is the sentence. There's a mistake here. You guys need to give me the correction. What is the, the correct way to say this i enjoyed with the movie what is wrong how do we correct it so go ahead take your time and write that down i shall sip my drink while you do that so i enjoyed with the movie what's wrong what is wrong in that sentence oh and i think what i'll do I will unlock the other ones as well, guys, so that you can start thinking. Ah! I gave away one of the answers. Ha ha ha. Okay, so I see some of you guys' answers. Uh, da, da, da. You haven't eaten yet, yet well, uh, Alonso. Well, go for it. Have lunch. You can have lunch while you watch the lesson. Yes, yeah, salmon has a silent L. So I am enjoying, not Sergi, that is not right. I enjoy watching the movie, okay, that works. Of the movie, no, okay. I enjoy the movie, yes sir, that's the answer I was looking for. I enjoyed the movie, I enjoyed watching the movie works as well. Exactly, but we can't have with, okay? So you enjoy something, okay? Enjoy is not followed by a preposition. That is a common mistake, especially, for example, for Spanish speakers. So I see coque. Um, that's a common mistake in Spain because in Spanish you say disfrutar con or disfrutar de. So you always have a preposition with it. Uh, but not in English. What could happen, though, you could say that you enjoy yourself. When you use it as a reflexive, you're basically just saying that you have a good time. Okay? All right, good. All right, so, oh, you guys are already on the next one. Perfect, so I look forward to meet you. I thought you guys were saying that. I look forward to meeting you. I was gonna say me too. <laughs> I look forward to meet you. So what is my problem on this one? Uh, I see Asari saying, I am looking forward to meeting you. Good. I'm looking forward to meet you. Mm, Alonso. Mm -mm 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 -mm. 
Sergi, I am enjoyed by the movie. No, the movie is not a person, so the movie cannot enjoy things. So you can't really use this in passive voice, because what you formed, Sergi, is a passive voice in this case, okay? All right, so let's go back to this one. I look forward to meet you. What I wrote is, I look forward to meeting you. So obviously the, the mistake here was because of forward and to. I look, that's my verb, but it's a verb followed by, followed by two preposition, forward and to. Now remember, prepositions are usually followed by I and G. So that's why here we have to say, I look forward to meeting you. Some of you said, I am looking forward to meeting you. That works fine as well. If you're using it in present continuous, I am looking forward. This is a little bit more informal than I look forward to. That's the only difference. There's no real, real difference there. Okay. Um, Exactly, after forward to, you can either use a noun, I look forward to your visit, that works, or if it's a verb, it has to be followed by ing, okay? All right, so let's have a look at the next one. She married with her best friend. What's, what's wrong here, guys? I, I think one of you guys replied. So Alonso, you said she married her best friend. That is correct, okay? But what if we want to use married and with? There's a way of doing that. There's, um, if we add something else, we can still use married with. But what would that option be? What is it? So she married her best friend, exactly. So that's the one that you guys uh, are telling me. She married her best friend. Perfect, very good. Oh my God, it looks so amazing. I love that screen. <laughs> Sorry. Um, so yes, she married her best friend. Good. But guys, I want you to use married with. It's possible, but we need to add something else before. Actually, not with with. Not with with. She got married with her best friend. She got married with. I'm having a doubt now. Yeah, that's what I wrote here. I thought so. We wouldn't say married with, guys. Sorry. Here is she got married to. You get married to someone. Okay? Exactly. But yeah, made a mistake here, guys. It's married to. But you need got in front of it. Okay? Or you could say she is married to. That also works. Okay? Uh, but not married with. Forget, forget, forget. That's a mistake I'm making because I hear my students making. That tends to happen. Okay? Uh, Alright, see you in a sec, Alonso. <laughs> Good. So we are done with the preposition category. We're going to move on to sentence structure. Okay? So ready for the next slide? Ta-da! Ha! So beautiful. <laughs> Come on, are you guys not excited about this? I think it looks fantastic. <laughs> okay, so sentence structure. A lot of those mistakes are very, very common because obviously from one language to the other, the structure is going to be completely different. Now, most of the time when you have sentence structure or word order problems, it's because you're literally translating from your own language to your target language, in this case, English. How can you, you know, fight that? What can you do to prevent that? So I've mentioned many times before, chunking, chunking. Does that ring a bell? I'll write that in the, in the comment section. Chunking. Does that ring a bell, guys? This is when you memorize groups of words together. Okay, instead of learning, um, I don't know, uh, bed, you're learning make your bed, okay? This goes together. In this case, it's a collocation. But you can do that with um, almost full sentences where you just remove a few elements and replace them and it's a new sentence, okay? If you, if you want to know more about that, check my previous videos. Uh, in my lives, I have talked about chunking. Um, and this is really, I think I mentioned it in my live about how to improve your speaking, okay? So check that, guys. 
Uh, if you want more info about chunking, chunking, it's a funny word. <laughs> My excitement is too big for you guys. <laughs> okay, well, let's move on with the first one. My mother wanted that I see a doctor. So then, let me put the next one. I think that's it. I think we only have two in this category. Yes, okay. Good. So I put both now so that you guys can start thinking because the, um, the comments are a little bit uh, behind time, okay? So those are the two first sentences. My mother wanted that I see a doctor and I like very much the ice cream. The second one, I like very much the ice cream, is the question that I posted on my Instagram this morning. So we'll have a look at the answer to that one, of course. So, do you have any idea what is wrong with my mother wanted that I see a doctor? I'd be a doctor. Okay, but that's not correcting it. Nope. Yes, sir, I like the ice cream very much. Nope. We'll have a look at that in, in just a few minutes, okay? So, anything else, guys, regarding my mother wanted that I be a doctor? How would you guys correct it? So, Yasser gave us his answer. What about everybody else? Okay, so Sergi is saying, my mother wanted me to be a doctor. And then, Khalid, you're saying, my mother wanted that I be a doctor. My mother wanted me to be a doctor. Okay, okay. So yes, guys, this is the correct answer. Okay, so you want someone to do something. The that is completely unnecessary, okay? My mother wanted to go to the doctor. That's come. Okay, uh, but that would be your mother going to the doctor. In the sentence, okay, we want your mother wants you to go to the doctor. Okay, so that's the structure, guys. To want someone to do something. Okay, so the answer here is. Oh, you were rewriting the sentence, Khalid. Gotcha. <laughs> so the answer is. I'll move to the side a bit more. <laughs> My mother wanted me to become a doctor, okay? This is a very, very common mistake. A lot of people don't really know how to use want correctly, okay? You want something or you want someone to do something. You don't need that with the want structure, okay, guys? Good. What about the next one? I like very much the ice cream. <laughs> So, what do you think for this one? So, Yasser said, I like the ice cream very much. This is better. I like the ice cream very much. It's better, but it's not quite there yet. Yasser, so try and correct that a bit more. So, I'll give you a bit of time to think. Just moving some things around on my screen. This is such a fantastic tool. I love it. <laughs> okay, I like the ice cream tremendously. It's, the problem really, guys, is the position of the word. So tremendously, yeah, it's a good word, but that's not what I'm looking for here. I'm looking, so there's basically two mistakes. The first one is the main one which is you should not separate the verb and the object. So what is the verb in the sentence and what is the object in the sentence as well? I extremely like the ice cream. That's still not what I'm looking for. <laughs> so guys, what is the verb and what is the object? We need that to be able to figure out how to put it back together correctly. I'll give you time to think. The dog is sleeping. You'll be happy to know. 
He joins me for every live and every lesson now. Okay, so guys, come on. The verb and the object, where are they? And what are they? <laughs> No, no, you know, you don't know, I don't know. <laughs> okay, so ice cream is the object. Good, that's good, perfect. So obviously you guys probably know the verb is like. So like and ice cream, they have to stay together. You can't put anything in the middle. The only thing really that you could put in the middle is an adjective, okay? I like the blue ice cream. That's the only thing you could put in the middle, okay? You can't separate your verb and your object. That is the first one, okay? Very important. Now, in this sentence, I'm talking in general. I like all the ice cream in the universe, okay? All of them, all of them. So when I speak in general, do I say the? I like the ice cream? No, if I say I like the ice cream, I'm talking about this one, the one that's right here, okay? It's a definite article, so it, we know um, what we're talking about. It is defined, we know what it is, okay? So that's why here I was not looking for the ice cream, okay? When you talk in general, you do not use articles, nope, because you're talking about all of them all of it so no plural and no article okay and also ice cream is uncountable in this case so the answer was i like ice cream very much okay i just said guys ice cream is uncountable it can be countable one ice creams two ice creams if you're referring to the actual thingy um but it's better to say i don't know a magnum a cornetto <laughs> um okay but yeah, Sergi, that works. Exactly, you're not supposed to be saying the the in this case. But again, guys, in specific situations, this sentence, I like the ice cream very much, would work, okay? If we know which ice cream in particular we're talking about, then no problem, it works fine, okay? All right, good, so let's move on to the next one. We're moving on to 10. Ah, no, you can see everything. <laughs> I need to, don't look at the screen, guys. I forgot to hide the answers. So don't look, otherwise you're gonna see everything. Ah, hide, 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 hide everything. <laughs> Sorry about that. Okay, so. Let's start with the first sentence. When I will arrive, I will call you. What's the problem here? Then we have this one as well, okay? So two sentences, they're both kind of using the future, so let's see what's wrong. In the sentence, the second one, if I will be in London, I will contact you. Hi Nisha, nice to see you. How are you? Hello. <laughs> Okay, guys, so, when I will arrive, I will call you. What's my problem here? Don't laugh, Khalid. <laughs> okay, so Nishan, you're saying when I arrive, can you say why in the comment section? And be careful, I know you're probably just typing quickly, but remember, I needs to be capitalized, a big I. The same for you, Koke, capitals. When I arrive, I'll call you, okay? When I arrive, I call you, okay? Yes, yes, Sarah, that is the correct answer. When is usually, of course, it's not always the case, but most of the time, when is followed by a present simple. So here, okay? when is usually followed by a present simple. And then that is the correct answer. When I arrive, 
I will call you. Okay, I will call you. I need to use will because I'm talking about the future. Absolutely. Okay, but on the first half with the when, it's more common to use a present simple. Okay, it's actually the same as well with before and after. I will call you after I arrive. I will call you before I leave. Those are also followed by present simple. Okay, good. Very good. Okay, next one. So yes, yeah, some of you guys are already writing conditional sentences. So guys, if you don't know how to correct the second sentence, which is on conditional, conditionals, make sure that you checked my other lives. I have several, well not lives, I have several lessons on conditionals on my little English page, but I also have several lives. I have two lives on conditionals at say oh yes, including last week lives. So make sure you check it. Okay. Present simple or simple present present. It's the same. It's the same. You can say both. I said present simple, present continuous, past perfect, but you could say it the other way around. That's fine. No problem at all. If I be in London, so here in Nishan you have a problem because be is not conjugated. It's basically your base verb, your infinitive. So you don't really have an actual verb that can hold the sentence together in this case. So that doesn't work. Okay, so then Khalid, if I go to London, I'll contact you. Okay, but why did you change the verb? I had be. Why did you change be? We can use be. We just need to do something with it. Okay, so if I go to London, I'll contact you is correct. But let's use be, guys. All right, Nishan. If I am in London, exactly, very good. Remember, Nishan, you need to put a capital on I. The same for you, Khalid. <laughs> if I've been in London, I will contact you. No, Sergi, it doesn't work here, okay? Which type of conditional is this? If I am in London, I will contact you. With a present simple on one side and a will on the other side. What type of conditional is that? Do you know? Let me know in the comment section. I like saying that. <laughs> so, what conditional type is it? <laughs> All right, I know we have a little delay, so I have to wait just a little bit. Do you guys know? With present simple after the if, Okay. Yes, Rosa. Hi, Rosa. Nice to see you again. Hello. Absolutely. Uh, is it a first? Yes, it's a first condition. I had to think about it for a second. Good. So this is a type one conditional. One point for Rosa. Ding, 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 ding. Well done. <laughs> okay. So the structure is if plus present simple, comma, will. Now, I did tell you guys in one of those lives that I've mentioned at Say Oh Yes, that you could have other modals after, instead of will. You could have might, may, um, that's, that's a possibility, okay? So be aware that it's not always just will. Hey, hey, no guys, it's type one. Type two has past, past simple and would, okay? Yep. That was a trap. So the correct answer is, if I am in London, I'll contact you or I will contact you. Okay? Good. All right, so we are moving on to our last category. All right, let's see if I hit the answers or not. Okay, good. So I didn't write the answers here, guys, because I want to have a look at it together. So you have all of the um, all of the, the, the mistakes on the board. That gives you time to have a look at all of them because, you know, there's a little delay with the comments. So make sure you already start there. Uh, can you put the other channels link? Yes, Khalid. Well, it's basically just type say, oh, yes, like this. Um, up uh, in on YouTube and you'll see that um, we have a, a weekly live on Friday. It's usually at 12.30, but we're going to push it back a little bit because it's a little bit early for a lot of people, okay? 
So guys, I speak good English. Every student like the teacher. I have a new for you. He told me three news. I didn't do nothing. I'm not agree. All right, so come on, let the comments come in. All right, good. So a lot of you guys are saying, well, I speak English well. Very good. I speak English perfectly. Why not, Sergi? That works too. So the problem here is that obviously the word good is an adjective, right? But I speak how. We're trying to explain how you speak, to give more information about the verb. So we need an adverb, okay? And good is an adjective, so it doesn't work. We need well, which is the adverb equivalent of good. Very good. Okay, that was easy peasy, lemon squeezy. Doo, 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 doo. <laughs> okay, every student like the teacher. Let's see what you guys have here. So Nishan said every student likes, okay. Um, yes, sir, you said every student like the teacher, okay. Huh, so Nishan, you're correct. Yes, sir, be careful. Every is followed by a singular. So that's why we say every student, okay? Every student. But now, student is now a singular. So it's a third, third person singular, which means we need to put an S at the end of the verb. Guys, I know it's a basic mistake. You can't make that mistake anymore. Um, I know, I don't know about students everywhere in the world, but I know about Spanish students because obviously I live in Spain. And that is one of the most common mistakes in English. And it's such a silly mistake and it's so easy and simple to solve it. All you have to do, and that's the only thing you have to do to form present simple, is to put an S in third person singular. So do it. <laughs> okay, good. So yes, every student likes the teacher. Let's correct the sentences actually. So here it would be well. And here... It would be every student likes the teacher. Okay, good. So now I'm seeing you guys commenting about the news one. He told me some news or three pieces of news. Okay, good. So I think I think you've noticed it was about countable and things like that. Okay, okay, okay. All right, all right. <laughs> Uh, I have a news for you, Khalid. Mm. I have some news for you. I have the news for you. So, Sergi, I have the news for you is kind of an easy way to escape this one. <laughs> okay, so, news always, always has an S. It is a plural, plural word. You can have new without an S, but that is the adjective. Okay, completely unrelated, not the same. So I can't really say I have a news because a means one. Okay, a un is the same as one. So I can't say one news. It's like if I said one cars. Doesn't work, doesn't match. Singular and plural, they don't go together. So that's my first problem. If I want to say that I have one, I'm going to have to find a way to make it countable. So somebody said a piece of news. That works. Very good. But it's quite common, guys, to use news with some. I have some news for you. So let's correct it. Okay. Like I said, you could say a piece of news. It just doesn't sound quite good though. It's better to use it for a piece of information. Okay, you can say a piece of news, but no. It's better to say some news. I have some news for you. So here, he told me three news. He told me three things. He told me three pieces of information. 
he to- yeah, he told me three things is probably the best the best in this case. Okay? Three things. Let's put that. Okay, it's not perfect, but it's it's a more accurate uh, more correct equivalent. Okay? All right, I didn't do nothing. What's wrong with that one? I didn't do nothing. Didn't do nothing. What's wrong? What's wrong with it? I didn't make nothing. Nope. That doesn't work, Sergi. <laughs> no, no. All right, yes, sir. I didn't do anything. That's good. I didn't do anything. Do I have anything? Anybody answered that one? I don't agree. That word. Oh, uh, that's a different one. Sorry. I was telling the other one. I didn't do anything. Okay, so you guys have it. I didn't do anything. Why? Because didn't has a negative. Nothing has a negative. No is a negative. We don't do double negatives in English, okay? So, we need to say anything, okay? Another example. I don't have anything. We don't say I don't have nothing. Now, you will hear... There's an angry neighbor. Can you hear that? <laughs> you will hear people use the double negative. For example, in... Uh, in music, it's quite common because it, it sounds kind of cool, yeah. But it's... Shush! <laughs> uh, but it, it's quite common to hear people use it. But know that it is incorrect, okay? I did nothing. That works as well. It, it has a slightly different meaning. I didn't do anything. For example, if somebody accuses you of doing something, no, it wasn't me. I didn't do anything, I promise. And the other one, to do nothing, um, let's say you, got, you come home and you have, you know, your kids are at home and you realize they've been on the sofa all day. You did nothing all day. That, that's quite different, right? <laughs> okay. Yeah, I did nothing. Yeah, okay, it's correct. It's just a little bit different, okay? There's a little nuance, uh, a slight difference between the two. Okay, good. Alrighty, so uh, guys, because we're getting towards the end and there's a little delay, um, after I've finished explaining the last one, which is I am not agree, we'll spend a little bit of time um, answering questions. So if you have questions for me now, you can start writing them down right now because I will see them in maybe 30 seconds. So you can start now, okay? Go, 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 go. All right, while you write your questions, I will answer the last one. I am not agree. So, let's be clear. Agree is a verb, right? It's a verb. How do we form negatives in English? By adding not to the auxiliary. So, I agree to become a negative is I do not agree, right? So, why I am not agree? That's a very common mistake. You guys want I think it's because in your own language, you are agree. In French, that's why you say it's être d'accord. Être is the verb to be. In Spanish, estar de acuerdo. Estar is also the verb to be. So that's one of the common mistakes. That's why you make this mistake so often. But remember, in English, to form negatives, you add the auxiliary do. Okay, so I do not agree. I don't agree. Of course, there is also the alternative of I disagree. Okay, this is one verb that expresses do not agree. I disagree. Okay, so let's correct this one directly here. Okay, I do not agree and we'll add I disagree. Okay, wunderbar. <laughs> Switch into German now. Okay. Okay, so I see some questions. Uh, Nishan is asking where I am from. So yeah, guys, sorry. 
I just completely switched. That's the end of all the mistakes for today, okay? Um, so we've had a look at pronunciation, prepositions, sentence structure, tenses, and more general grammar mistakes. Hopefully you found that interesting. Now make sure to stay posted because now we're doing a little Q&A. So questions and answers. Um, this is not necessarily going to be English focused, but it's always good to work on your listening. Okay, so please feel free to write questions in the comment section, whether it's about English or slightly unrelated, that's fine. Okay, <laughs> um, so yes, where am I from? I am French, so I'm from France, but I'm also half Spanish and I currently live in Spain. I live in the south of Spain, but um, a lot of people ask me, are you more French or are you more Spanish? I was born and raised in France, so my whole childhood happened in France. So obviously I have stronger roots and, and deeper connections there. But I also came to Spain every single year. I have a lot of family here and I mean I've been living here for five years. So both are strong, both nationalities. <laughs> How did I get the idea of becoming a tutor. Um, well, I never wanted to be a teacher, really. I thought teaching was just for, you know, teaching kids, and I don't have that kind of patience. I like teaching adults. Um, so it was kind of just a bunch of things that turned out this way. I was never planning on becoming a teacher. I just came to Spain to get my driving license, and then discovered I could become a teacher and from there on I became a teacher and I started loving it and I still do okay so let me just remove everything on the screen now we don't need it anymore doom, doom. this is magic magic <laughs> okay so then ooh. Okay, yes, um, so yes, sir, I said, you said sometimes people say something like, I do agree with you. This is done, I do agree with you, to express emphasis, adding an auxiliary verb when it's not necessary. In this case, in a present simple, in a positive sentence, it's not necessary. But the I do agree with you is just a way to emphasize that you really agree. I do agree. I do. I really do. Okay, it's an emphasis with that verb. Of course, Anushan, you're asking if in the future we'll have activities to improve our communication skills. Absolutely. Um, I've done uh, fairly recently a big live on speaking and tips that you can use to improve. Uh, I need to do some on writing because I haven't done writing much. So that is definitely one of my plans for the future. Yes, absolutely. Hey, Kader, nice to see you. Okay. Um, do I prefer Linux or Windows? I'm using neither, to be honest. I had to switch to Mac. I used to have a Windows and I loved it. I loved it. It was so cool, so intuitive. Then I switched to Mac. It took me a while to adapt, but now I'm fairly used to it and I, I do like my Mac. It's, it's quite convenient. Especially when you're doing things like what I'm doing now with different screens on, when you're doing a little bit of graphic things, it's, it's really useful. So yes, sir, that's the reason why, okay, is to, 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 to emphasize, um, mm, for example, uh, let's say, say, you don't like me, I do like you, I do like you. Okay, so no, no, I do. I, I like you. Yes, I like you. Okay, I do like you. Okay. Do I sing? A little bit. I like singing. <laughs> but I'm too shy to sing right now live. It's impossible. It's not happening. <laughs> okay. Uh, what is my plan in three years for my life and my career? Uh, career-wise, well, hopefully, um, I will be able to fully rely on working online. Uh, as you know, guys, I, 
I co-founded my little, uh, my, not my little English page, Say Oh Yes. So that's a platform that we're trying to um, to improve. It's constantly improving um, to provide speaking classes in, in small groups. And, and it, it's going to have a lot more interactive features. So that that's the goal is to really work on developing that and, you know, taking over the English world with it. <laughs> obviously and i'd really really like for the youtube channel to grow a little bit more um so that i can help more people as well so that is definitely something um and courses i actually have quite a few courses written i just can't bring myself to filming it all and then editing it all because it is going to be a colossal um job but i have like three or four courses written out all the scripts everything i just I'm scared. <laughs> All right. Um, what department did you graduate from, please? Um, well, I was studying in university in Paris, um, in Paris 10, which is in Nanterre. Um, and I studied English and Spanish. My degree was called LEA, which is Langue Étrangère Appliquée, Foreign Languages Applied. It's kind of a strange name. Um, so we had a bit of translation, we had a bit of um, history, we had a little bit of law, a little bit of economy, a little bit of everything really, um, but focused on English and Spanish. Um, so yeah, that's, that's what I graduated from. Do I prefer short hair or long hair? You know, I wish I could rock the super long hair, to rock the long hair. To rock something means to pull it off, to do it and it looks good. Unfortunately, my hair, you can't see, but I have very thin hair. It's very thin. And when it gets really long, it just gets really flat like this. <laughs> so it's, it, that's why, well, this is one of the shortest haircuts I've had in a very long time. But, um, but that's why I never really go much longer than around here. Because afterwards, it's just like, it's like a mop. It's not very pretty. Um, but right now I'm liking this length. Uh, I cut it really short about a month or two ago. It was cool, but this length, I think that's my favorite. I really like it. <laughs> All right, guys, enough talking about me. We're done with me. <laughs> oh, more questions. Have you ever been to Asian countries? No, but I am dying to go to Asia. I absolutely want to go to Asia. If I die before I go to Asia, I will come back to Earth and haunt Asia. No, I won't do that, sorry. <laughs> but I need to go to Asia, definitely. Um, um, so, I'm very attracted to Japan and South Korea because I know a bit more about it because I'm quite a big geek and I love mangas and, and, um, and Korean TV shows. So I, I feel like I know a bit more about those two countries. So those are definitely my, my, my top. But, um, you know, India and um, Thailand, there's so many countries to visit that I would really like to visit one day. Absolutely. About my life. So be careful, Khalid, it's life. Okay, not live. My life is what I'm doing now. <laughs> Want to stay in Spain as well. Probably for a while. I don't know if I'm going to be in Spain forever, but I love Spain. We love our life that we have here at the moment. So there's no reason for us to leave, really. To leave, really. So for now, we're good. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you so much, guys. I think we're going to wrap it up here. Um, have a lovely day. Remember to come back tomorrow. Uh, I have had to delete some of the links for the, um, the marathon and re-upload them. That's why yesterday I couldn't go live from the new software, but I think the problem is solved. Just make sure that, um, uh, for tomorrow you check the new, it's the same thumbnail. It looks exactly the same as the one that I had posted yesterday. But make sure you do check the link for day three. And tomorrow, if I remember correctly, we're having a look at easily confused words, words that you guys confuse quite often and quite commonly. So make sure to come back tomorrow, guys, at 4 p.m., same time, same place. And that's it, guys. Thank you so much for watching. And of course, keep on learning. Bye-bye. See you tomorrow. Mwah. Bye. 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 Is it ending? <laughs>